so let us create a i section so i am going in x y plane <coughs> now in the x y plane i am drawing a sketch so i am choosing a rectangle over here and uh, i am just drawing a simple rectangle like this uh, let us go for the dimensioning of this so i want to have the general dimension between the starting point and this point as uh, say 0.5 or rather 0.25 meters and uh, if i zoom this the width of this rectangle i want to have let us say 0.5 meter and uh, say the height of uh, this rectangle uh, i want to have let us say 0.1 meter so let us go to the draw and uh, delete these dimensions lines so now you can see that i have created the bottom most flange over here <coughs> similarly uh, now i can create a, a web portion which is like this i'll go to the dimensions so i'll select the dimension between the point and this as uh, let us say this is 0 0.01 okay or rather i'll go with 0 0.1 okay and uh, the overall width i'm keeping this as 0 0.2 the height of this section is let us say 0 0.4 meters i'll go to draw once again and uh, i will delete these dimension lines okay <coughs> then i am going for the rectangle once again so roughly i am drawing a rectangle like this i am going to the dimensions uh, i am selecting the distance between this is now let us say 0 0.5 which is exactly matching with this level and uh, the dimension between this point and this i am keeping this as 0 0.25 okay and the width of this rectangle i am keeping this as 0 0.5 meter so this is exactly the mirror image of the bottom most flange so we have this section now okay so let me delete this dimension lines uh, we can go to the draw once again and you can see that uh, uh, this line is common so we can go to the modify you can use a simple trim command you can use trim once and then you can use trim twice so you can see this is portion is gone here also I am keeping I am doing the same thing okay so you can see now we can have a clear cut boundary of a rectangular eye section so this is my eye section which is ready so the total height of this uh, beam is now 600 mm so I am just going for extrusion of this particular sketch so I am going for extrude and in place of this depth as 1 meter I am going for now 6 meters and you can say generate so now you can see uh, we have a body which is having the eye, eye section and uh, it has got a depth as three, uh, 600 mm and the depth is now 6 uh, meters now <coughs> Uh, uh, for pre-stressing forces I am going in XY plane once again so I am going back in the XY plane let me zoom this now in the XY plane I am going to create a new sketch so this is let us say sketch number 2 now in the sketch number 2 I am going to create a simple circle which is for the pre-stressing so I am creating this circle I am going for the dimensions so the dimension between the center of this circle and the horizontal line this I am keeping this as 0 0.3 which is exactly at the center of the depth of the beam and the dimension of this circle I am keeping this as 0 0.1 meter or if you want you can have uh, even smaller uh, let us say 0 0.05 meter okay so it's up to you so let us keep it 0 0.1 or uh, we can go for 0 0.05 uh, I'll go to the draw let me delete these dimension lines they are not necessary now so we can see uh, this sketch is drawn over here so now I am going to extrude uh, this particular sketch so the depth of the extrusion is uh, 6 meter so in place of add material now I am going for the imprint faces 
so once i go for the generate button so now you can see uh, you will find the uh, rectangular portion uh, unfortunately it is not there so what we can do is this extrusion uh, uh, we can have up to the next and through all bodies it should have come but uh, i don't know why it is not showing so let me try it once again so this is my extrude so in place of next i am going for through all and then i am going for generate so now you can see the circle is appeared over here and at the same time if you look at the back side back side also you will find there is a circle so now our uh, uh, model is kind of a ready so now we can transfer this model to the finite element um, uh, simulation uh, so we have uh, <coughs> imported uh, this model into the ansys mechanical so now you can see uh, this is there is only one solid and uh, right now it is consisting of st uh, structural steel so we can change the properties and we can make this is the concrete uh, we can have to go for the meshing of this so you can change the size and other options are available over here so i'm just going for the default mesh uh, which can be uh, created like this uh, once the uh, machine is created, uh, we can go for the uh, uh, loading and the uh, boundary condition part. So I am going for the static structural. Now in the static structural, you can go to the environment and there are many options like there is a load. Okay, uh, There are fixed supports, there are different types of supports over here. So I am choosing the displacement support. Now in the displacement support, uh, I am just selecting the uh, simple line this line and this line i am just saying apply and i am keeping the displacement in x direction as zero y direction as zero and the z direction also uh, zero okay uh, then i am just going for uh, the another boundary or another edge which is uh, at the over here so i'll just go for the uh, environment and i'll go for the displacement uh, section and in the displacement now i'm choosing a line which is this one okay uh, this line so you can see in the 3d view uh, this line is now selected so now this line uh, i'm just going for apply so i want to keep this as a roller support so the z direction will be free but the y direction and the x direction will be zero now <coughs> uh, on this uh, particular surface i am going to apply a simple load that is a udl so i can apply uh, the pressure from here so if pressure is always perpendicular and let us say its magnitude is say 100 so 100 pascal force is getting applied over here so now you can see this end is uh, hinge this end is roller and it is subjected to a pressure so it's a kind of a simply supported beam subjected to uniformly distributed load now here uh, i want to see the deform shape so i am just going for the total deformation so once i see the total deformation i can uh, i can also have the the bending stresses so i can have the normal stresses so i want to see the normal stresses in bending so bending will be there in the z axis so this is the deformation and this is the stresses uh, this is these are the outputs we want and then i'm just going to say simply solve this so based on the uh, type of the mesh and the size of the element the uh, solution time will vary so right now uh, it is uh, randomly discretized it is discretized using the tetrahedron elements so it is going to take uh, quite a bit of a time uh, and then we can see the solutions so it is now almost done <coughs> right so now you can see uh, this is the deformed shape okay so you can see the maximum deformation is occurring at the center of the beam uh, you can also see in the animation how the 
beam is getting deformed okay and you can see this is the bending stresses so you can see the stresses uh, are uh, in kind of a compression and in uh, tension side so on the tension side it is deflected uh, it is reflected by red color and you can see the values uh, in this particular contour band okay now this was uh, a simply supported beam now let us add the pre-stressing forces over here so here you can see uh, we have created a circle over here it is for the uh, pre uh, for the using the imprint faces option so now i am selecting this particular uh, surface now on this uh, surface i am going to apply a force so we can apply a force in form of a vector or in form of a uh, component also so i am going for the component so i want to apply a horizontal component which is there is z direction so let us say i am applying uh, uh, 1 or say 10 into 10 to the power 3 that is 10 kN force so in the right now it is uh, in the uh, it is coming outside so if you want to uh, change the direction you just go for a negative one okay now the same thing uh, we have to apply from that end also so we can see this view now okay so on this surface now you can see this the back surface is now getting selected okay so now on this back surface i am going to apply a, a force once again okay so i'm just changing this to a component and this time i'm going to apply 10 p3 okay so now it is uh, coming inside so now if you see the overall picture uh, right now this a is nothing but the pressure which is coming from the top uh, b and c they are the supports and this d and e it is nothing but your uh, pre-stressing forces so this is coming inside and the last one it is coming inside the beam okay now because of this pre-stressing forces the deformations and other things they are going to change so for the time being you just understand the uh, total deformation the maximum deformation earlier it was 4.5 10 to the power minus 6 so now let us see whether this deformation is changing after applying the pre-stressing force so this deformation will change uh, definitely if uh, you are applying a force or uh, force or the pre-stressing force in the eccentric uh, uh, pattern so now you can see uh, once the pre-stressing force is applied now you can see the value has been changed okay as far as normal stresses are concerned the pattern of normal stresses they are also now changed okay so you can see this is getting uh, uh, inside so it's kind of a plunging kind of a thing so no, not to worry you have to just change the some of the uh, uh, meshing patterns you can go for a coarse mesh and then you can get the more appropriate results